directions say solve the right triangle. They're out of the five things that they can give you, they're going to give you two things. They're either going to give you two sides uh, or a side and an angle. And that's what they gave us here. They gave us a side, the hypotenuse, and an angle. We got to find the other angle. We got to find this side, and we have to find this side. So there's three things that we have to do. The easiest thing to do is find the other acute angle, right? What is the complement of 37? 53. Right, that's the easiest part. So instantly, we know that part. Angle, the measure of angle P is 53 degrees. Okay, questions? All right, so now that we have that down, we can either use the 37 or we can use the 53. It's up to you. Okay? If it were me, I would simply say the sine of 37 and go from there. What does the sine of 37 equal? Well, I'm going to put an X and Y here just to help us with some unknowns, some variables. But what does the sine of 37 equal? X over 22. The opposite side, X is opposite of 37, 22 is the hypotenuse. So in order to solve this, we just say X equals 22 times the sine of 37 on our calculator. And what do we get? What is X equal? 13.2. Rounded to the nearest tenth, we get 13.2. Okay? Questions? So, what I said earlier is I don't want you to use 22 and 13.2 to try to find Y, right? Because 13.2 has been rounded, I don't want to use a rounded figure in order to find that third side. What trig function am I going to use? Well, not sine, or sine of what? You, you could use the sine of 53 because that would be Y over 22. Or you could use what? The cosine of... 37 equals what? Y over 22. So there's two different trig functions that you could use. If it's me, I'm going to stick with 37. I'm going to say the cosine of 37 equals Y over 22. Y is on the top, so all I have to do is multiply both sides by 22. I multiply 22 here, I multiply 22 here, those cancel, and I get Y equals whatever that is. Somebody read it out to me. 17.6. 17.6. Thank you. Questions? So there we've solved the right triangle. We figured out this angle, we figured out this side, and we figured out this side. That's all the information. We have all three sides and all three angles. That's everything we could find. Okay? Questions? Any questions on solving a right triangle? All right, let's look at number five. Let's try to read out number five. So it looks like this. This is 11 and this is 18, is that right? And this is P, Q, is this a O? Is this an O? Or a Q? Q, okay. Is that right? All right, so what did they give you this time? Last time they gave you a side and an angle. What did they give you this time? Side, side. More specifically, instead of side, side, which is true, what did they give you? They gave you a leg and a leg. Right? I mean, you're already thinking ahead. You're thinking Pythagorean theorem. How am I going to solve for the hypotenuse? I got two legs. Am I going to be adding them or am I going to be subtracting them? Adding. So to find x, right, the very first thing that I would find, I would simply say x equals the square root of 18 squared plus 11 squared, which is like the square root of 445, I think, which works out to be what as a decimal? 21.1. 21. 21. 21. Okay, very good. So just like that, using the Pythagorean theorem, we figured out the missing side. So we have all three sides, right? Now we have to change gears and say, uh-oh, now what are we going to find? We didn't have to do this on the last one. They gave us an angle. It was very easy to find the other angle. But now I don't have either one of the acute angles. How am I going to find the acute angles? What, what do I have to use? We, we talked about it yesterday. Got to use inverse. Very good. So I'm going to pick one of these. I'm going to say the sine of, nope, I don't want to use sine. Why not? Why don't I want to use sine or cosine? Because I would be using 21.1 and 21.1 was rounded. Right? Here's my hypotenuse. Sine and cosine both use hypotenuse. So I don't want to use those because it's rounded. That limits me to what? What's the only other trig function I can use? So I say the tan of P equals what? What does the tan of P equals? Opposite over adjacent. 
If you're still thinking tan equals what, 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 you, you're going to be behind them all. You've got to study. You've got to know it like that. Okay? So the tan of P is 18 over 11. How do I solve and go backwards and figure out P? I do the inverse. So I say tan, sorry, inverse tan of 18 over 11 is going to equal P. I type that in my calculator and I round to the nearest tenth and what do I get? Say it again. 58.6. Without doing any work, without clearing anything out, without rounding or anything, hit minus nine zero, and that'll tell you your other angle, right? Because they're complements. I can simply subtract 90, and I know that it's not going to be negative. What does it work out to be? 31.4. 31.4. Your calculator says negative 31.4, but you're smart enough to know that you're not going to have a negative angle. Okay, questions? Will this angle and this angle always add up to 90? Yes, they're complements. Will this side here always be bigger than 11 and bigger than 18? Yes, because it's a hypotenuse. Those are quick visual checks to make sure you're on the right track when tomorrow on the test. Okay, questions? Yes? Will you do number seven? Uh, instead of six or an addition to six? Well, I got an addition. An addition to six. Let's do six first and then we'll go through. All right, six. Let's look at six. Looks like that. This is seven, and this is 23. So just like number five, what information are they giving you? They're giving you two sides, right? More specifically, which two sides are they giving you? Now they've changed up and they're giving you the hypotenuse and a leg. So in order to find this X, this missing side over here, what are we going to have to do? We're going to have to subtract. X equals what? The square root of? 23 squared minus 7 squared. I type all that in my calculator and what do I get? 21.9. Thank you. Is 21.9 less than 23? Yes, it is. So just a quick mental check tells me, hey, I'm on the right track. Okay? Uh, give me some letters here. U, S, and T. U, S, and T. Now I've got to find the two acute angles, okay? So I want to find, uh, let's start out with S. What trig function do I want to use in order to find S? Here's S, and I have a 7, and I have a 23. What is the relationship between 7 and 23? This is adjacent, and this is hypotenuse. Which one deals with adjacent and hypotenuse? So the cosine of S will equal 7 over 23. The inverse cosine of 7 over 23 equals S. Guys, you don't even have to write that step down, okay? You don't have to write the first one down if you, if you can understand it, okay? All I'm looking for is what is the measurement of S. If you, you figure out its inverse si uh, cosine of 7 over 23, that's fine. What do you get as the answer here? 72.3, .3, very good. If this one is 72.3, I subtract from 90, and very easily I find this angle, U up here, what is it? 17.7, is that right? Very good. So tic-tac-toe and I'm done. I found the missing side, which was a leg, and then I found the two angles using the inverse trig functions. Okay, questions?